Hi everybody and welcome to Amy Nolte Music. Today I'm so excited to be talking about one of the great producers, A&R men, composers, performers of the entire music industry, but also of Motown, Smokey Robinson. I'm going to focus mostly on the songwriting today, although I could make a video about any, any one of those words, those roles that I just mentioned, and there would be so much to talk about. And I'm so excited to go over to the piano with you and go through some of my very favorite Smokey Robinson compositions and talk about what makes them so dang good. At this point, I want to say that Smokey Robinson maybe was the most prolific, maybe, of the writers for Motown. Uh, but Holland, Dozier, and Holland typically get credit for being like the very most prolific. But we got to remember that the Motown sound wasn't just Smokey Robinson by any means. It was formed by numerous composers who just crafted the sound of Motown. People like Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, Lionel Richie, Ivy Joe Hunter, Sarita White, quite a big handful of other composers, although Smokey might be my favorite. And we can't forget that Barry Gordy had his hand in all of it. All right, Smokey Robinson, born in Detroit. He had a truck driver for a father who apparently could sing nicely, a jazz loving mother. Who doesn't love a jazz loving mother? Oh my gosh. And from the time he could speak, it seems like he was doing music. He had a couple of vocal groups while he was growing up, and right at the end of his high school career, he put the miracles together, met up with Barry Gordy, and the two of them started to build Motown together. The first song I want to talk about is Mean. Like, it's got one of those mean grooves to it. I might make a video later about songs with mean grooves. But of course this song starts out very rubato, you know. When I became of age, my mama called me to her side. She said, son, you're growing up now, and pretty soon you'll take a bride. And then she said, and here's where the mean part starts. You guys, oh my gosh. Can you just imagine, like, two people just like on the dance floor with their faces real close together and they've got a mean look on their face <laughs> and they're each like dancing on their own like they're not like holding hands they I don't know if you could imagine it but when I hear this song it makes me think of that kind of mean emotion like on the dance floor I don't know if that makes any sense but we got <laughs> just because you become a young man now there's some things that you don't understand now and it's you see what i mean it's it's like so soulful but all we've got is two chords going on this was a hit in 1959 barry gordy helped write it and i mean it's just two chords we got g7 to c7 just back and forth couple of couple of dominant chords and they would be nothing without this melody and without this killer lyric something like that. It's, it's kind of hard to play, easier to try to sing. And and the rhythm is so nice, right? That, that's what's kind of mean about it, I think, is the fact that it's this dominant sound, this bluesy sound, but with that driving rhythm going on. But then we just come to this one secondary dominant chord. It's the only thing that's really different. My mama told me, and it's the hook, you better shop around. And he's got the miracles backing him up and a really cool production, and it just feels so good. But it's the first example of how Smokey Robinson can do a lot with just a couple of chords. Also, I just want to say the lyric, like, the lyric's so cool. Like, did his mama really tell him you should shop around? How did he, how did he come up with that? Like, the women come and the women gonna go now before you tell them that you love them so now. Like, it's a good sentiment, and I suppose I've told it to my kids, but I don't think I've actually said the words shop around, you know. But, but yeah, it's, it's good advice, and it's so cool that he thought to just, you know, put a really killer, mean kind of lyric to it. I'm not sure what key Smokey did. You really got a hold on me in. But I like to sing it in B flat. And 
it's so fun. I don't like you, but I love you. Seems that I'm always thinking of you. Oh, oh, oh. you treat me badly. I love you madly. You really got a hold on me. Twelve, eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We got so many cool Motown songs, R&B songs, um, rock and roll hits, really, that were written with this twelve, eight kind of groove in mind. And I, I mean, I love the way I love everything about this song. And of course, you know, the, Smokey wasn't the only one to record it. But but how about the lyric again, right? I don't like you, but I love you. <laughs> you treat me badly. I love you madly. He finds the inverse of everything, saying that sometimes love isn't cut and dry. And, you know, I, I'm not sure if it's real or not, but I read that Bob Dylan called Smokey Robinson a great poet. And I absolutely find that to be true. One of these songs, and I'm talking about for The Temptations, Maybe one of the groovinest songs I've ever heard in my life. Uh, Co-written with Bobby Rogers is The Way You Do The Things You Do. And you can't say that title without absolutely knowing the rhythm that this title would have had to have been sung in. The way you do the things you do. Like, it's just a swinging title, isn't it? You've got a smile so bright know you could have been a candle I'm holding you so tight you know you could have been a handle we've got one chord all through that just D major pretty much that's it and and all of a sudden you know he's comparing her smile to a candle he's he's saying how holy how tight he holds her that she could have been a handle the way you swept me off my feet we go to the four chord you know you could have been a broom it's a different kind of poet right like it's not like um it's that's not a beautiful thing to say but it's a fun thing to say you swept me off my feet you could have you could have been a broom could have been a handle could have been a candle could have been a broom and now we're gonna talk about some perfume the way you smell so sweet you know you could have been some perfume well you could have been anything that you wanted to and i can tell the way you do the things you do the way you do the things you do i can tell the way you do the things you do the way you do. and I mean, it's not even much of a chorus, right? It's just, well, you could have been anything you wanted to, and I can tell the way you do the things you do. The hook is so short. And it's another characteristic that I'm finding as I'm going through a lot of Sm Smokey Robinson songs is that you can't always really put like a form to his songs the way that you can to most rock and pop songs. Um, because sometimes the chorus is just a couple of lines like that. And, and do you even call it the chorus? I don't know. And, and sometimes there is no bridge and sometimes it's an A and then a B and then a C. Like it's just a little bit hard to define the way that Smokey writes. And, and I think that he wasn't thinking about that so much. I, I really feel like he was just, um, he was just on another wavelength, just operating and the songs came to him. That's the feeling I get. Do you know what this one is? I really like this movement, like like from the five of the chord to the six of the chord to the major seven and back. This song um, was a great hit for Mary Wells in 1964, and it's called My Guy. It was actually another great hit under a different name, My God, for, uh, you know, those nuns and Whoopi Goldberg. Great renditions in the Sister Act movie, right? But uh, but I uh, the Mary Wells is uh, absolutely a classic. Nothing you can say can tear me away from my guy. Such a melody. It's just I mean it seems like it's really simple, right? But when you put it in somebody's range like that, like right there in the strong range of Mary Wells' voice. No muscle about man to take my hand. 
and the way that she sings it, it's got so much soul just with this bouncy little thing going on. Nothing you could do cause I'm stuck like glue to my guy. This is one of the most interesting chords we've seen from Smokey Robinson this far. And it's called, we're going to call it the five of six. It's a D7, which, which should lead us to G minor, but it doesn't lead us to G minor. I'm sticking, we goes to the two. I'm sticking to my guy like a stamp to a letter like birds of a feather wing. We stick together. I'm telling it from the start. I can't be torn apart from my guy. We got the cool, or I think it's boom, boom. Is that right? Yeah. No handsome face could ever take the place of my guy. He's got the best rhymes. Nothing you could do could make me be untrue to my guy. Nothing you could buy could make me tell a lie to my guy. I gave my guy my word of honor to be faithful, and I'm gonna. We're rhyming honor with gonna. You best be believing. I won't be deceiving my guy. It's a textbook. It's a textbook for how to write lyrics. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if many, many, many of the people who have shaped pop music throughout the years would tell you that they reference Smokey Robinson for their lyric writing. Just as great of a song for another group called The Temptations Again is not my guy, but my girl. Co-written by Ronald White, 1964. It was a huge hit for the temptations might be one of might be my favorite temptation song i'm not sure about that but gosh i mean you can't hear the song and turn it off can you i've got sunshine on a cloudy day we've just got these two chords going on when it's cold outside I got the month of May right but that's uh I mean it's a beautiful lyric it's a it's a very beautiful melody even just that little it could have been I've got sunshine on a cloudy day but the way that the melody gets interpreted I've got sunshine on a cloudy day. It's a real testament to a true performer knowing how to phrase a melody. David Ruffin, always the master at that. And it, 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 so it's the phrasing that kind of makes it, but it's also the bass line. Played by the great bass player James Jamerson, who we will hear from again soon. Six one one two three five. I've got sunshine on a cloudy day. It's almost like a counter melody, isn't it? It's just brilliant. And then we've got this uh, B section. I guess you say, what can make me feel this way? And then here's our hook. It's very short. My girl, harmony. My girl. Talking about my girl, my girl. That's it. That's the hook. And then we come back to the next verse, and it's phrased completely differently. I've got so much honey. It's hard to do it at the same time, but you get what I'm saying. The phrasing in this song, uh, you know, coupled with Smokey Robinson's amazing songwriting, it made this a timeless classic that was, is, is going to go down in history. We're never going to stop loving it. 1964 was a big year. It was a big year for Smokey Robinson. It was a big year for Motown. And the Miracles recorded Ooh, Ooh, Baby, Baby, co-written by Peter Moore in the same year, 1964. Of course, Linda Ronstadt recorded it later. Uh, Todd Rundgren, too. Both great versions of this killer ballad. Mistakes, I, know I, made a few. I just, I mean, the chorus, right? The chorus is just, ooh, baby, baby. It's a very short hook again. But this verse is, um, I just can't even understand it. It's so gorgeous. I 
did you wrong? My heart went out to play. And in the game, I lost you. This line right here kills me, you guys. What a price to pay. I'm crying. And, and it's just one one verse straight to the chorus. It's uh, Some songs are written like that. I, I might make a video someday. I'm, I've got a list of them. But, but songs with one verse that is strong enough to take you straight to the chorus, th th that's special to me. Like you didn't even have to repeat the verse. The verse was strong enough to stand on its own one time. And then we go to the chorus. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We've just got this one chord with a major seven. Baby, baby. We move to the two and it's a minor seven. And we go right back. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And you can phrase that different ways. You know, Smokey did, Linda did, Todd did. Baby, baby. And then the second verse gets gets treated differently. Much the same as uh, My Girl by The Temptations, right? Because a great singer will. Mistakes. You know, I've made a few, but I'm only human. And then we get this again. You've made mistakes too. Oh, there's just so much beauty in it. It's like, it's like too much to take. All right, can you tell what the next one I'm going to talk about? This hit written in 1965 with co-writers Peter Moore, Marv Tarplin. The Miracles recorded it. If I just play you the chords, could you tell? tell? I'm going to guess that you can't because the chords are not special. Again, it's just one, two, four, five. And we could probably name a lot of songs that just use those chords even in that order. But when you add the lyric, when you add the melody, this song becomes one of Smokey's best, in my opinion. People say I'm the life of a party cause I tell a joke or two. Linda Ronstadt did this one too, didn't she? I can hear both versions in my head. Although I might be laughing out loud, deep inside I'm blue. There it is. People say I'm the life of the party because I tell a joke or two. Although I might be laughing loud and hearty, I think that's the real word, deep inside I'm blue. So take a good look at my face. Take a good look at my face. you see my smile. The chords don't change, you guys. They stay the same. You see my smile looks out of place. If you look closer, it's easy to trace the tracks of my tears. It just stays the same. Nothing changes except that the lyrics pull you in more. The melody gets even more interesting than it already was. And again, for Smokey, for Linda, it's just right in that money part of their voice. It's just gonna like, mm, it's just gonna grab you every time. And this song reminds me of another one that we will uh, we'll get to later called The Tears of a Clown. Um, it's kind of the same kind of thought, right? And I think Tears of a Clown was inspired by Pagliacci, um, you know, the, the clown that appears to be happy, but it really has more going on inside. This, this is one of the songs that actually has a, a bridge, like a real bridge to speak of. And it's such a nice one, you know, it's the part that goes, I need you, need you, I need you, need you, outside of masquerading. My favorite part. My smile is my makeup I wear since my breakup with you. So baby, take a good look. It leads you so nicely right back one more time to the chorus of the song. This is a masterpiece. Smokey Robinson also penned hits for lots of female performers as well, like the Supremes, Mary Wells, the Marvelettes. Speaking of the Marvelettes, I'd like to mention Don't Mess With Bill. 
which is one of the great Bill songs, right up there with Marry Me Bill, isn't it? In fact, I kind of feel like those two songs could go together, possibly. All right, just, uh, sorry, indulge me for a second. Oh, but am I ever gonna hear those wedding bells? Come on, Bill. with Bill, leave my Billy alone, right? I'm, I'm not wrong, right? They could fit together. <laughs> but Don't Mess With Bill was written in 1965 for the Marvelettes. Man, they sound killer on it. Don't mess with Bill. Don't mess with Bill. And again, it's just this mean, mean thing. I think it was actually a D chord going to a G chord. Don't mess with Bill. Just like D7 to G7. Don't mess with Bill. It's just like the shop around was, right? The shop around just had those two bluesy chords going back to back and forth. And Smokey Robinson, how the heck does he do it? He does more with two chords than Fleetwood Mac, <laughs> right? Like I've always said Fleetwood Mac does a lot with, you know, there's a lot of their songs just have like two chords or something. And, and they're able to, you know, make hits out of that. Smokey Robinson can do the exact same thing. But I think, uh, I don't know, maybe more skillfully, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to pit Smokey Robinson and Fleetwood Mac against each other. But but I kind of choose Smokey every time. <laughs> One of my favorite things about Get Ready, although it was the last last song that Smokey Robinson wrote for The Temptations, is the way that it kind of has an ambiguous third. Like, like you don't quite feel if it's a major or a minor tonality. Um, it's actually major, I think, with a lot of blue notes, but, but I'll go through that right now. All right. It's also one of the songs that James Jamerson played the bass for again, and and to me, the, his bass playing makes the entire song. The production on this song is dynamite. And like I said, it's got an ambiguous third in it. Like, it's in the key of D, and we've got Never met a girl who makes me feel the way that you do You can see how much bending I have to do to like even tr attempt to play that melody um, because I mean it's this it's this note it makes it sound like it should be D minor. Never met a girl who makes me feel the way that you do. It's all right. Like that would have sounded fine, but it that's not how it is. And you can hear it. there's a third. You can hear it if you listen. It's kind of on the top of a chord, I think. So it, it's kind of, it's kind of right there, like in the range of this this minor third, and it's what makes it ambiguous to me. Almost like it could have just been a power chord, right? Just power chords the whole time. I never met a girl who makes me feel the way that you do. Just a power chord would have done it, but. But it's got that in there. So it's got like this, um, I don't know, it's a little happier than you think. I never met a girl who makes me feel the way that you do. And it fights and it's beautiful. I love that fight. It's a beautiful fight. But how about this? We hop up to the four chord and then we come to this F chord. It's the flat three in the key of D. It's like, I mean, it's it's D adjacent, isn't it? Like it's not hard to resolve this chord to a D. This chord, this note is the same between them. This one would just have to raise a whole step and this one would have to raise a half step. It's a really nice relationship, isn't it? And I think that we can see how or why he chose to use the F chord in relation to the D when we get to the next section of the song. I mean, we've got the fee fi fo fum look out baby, cause, cause here I come. And then we just, we're just gonna stay in F. And this is when the production knocks me out, you guys. And I'm bringing you a love that's true, so get ready, so get ready. I'm gonna try to make you love me too, so get ready, so get ready. Hey, and listen to the backing vocals, oh my gosh. It's 
and the strings and the bass. It should have been a huge hit for The Temptations. It was a big hit, but it was sadly the last song that Smokey wrote for The Temptations. Apparently there was some deal made. Uh, you can read about it, um, maybe just on the Wikipedia page for Get Ready. But uh, this, this was the last song that he made because it wasn't quite a big enough hit and then they kind of changed directions. All right, what if I play you the chords again? I just think it's such a funny game. Um, what if I play you the chords from this 1967 hit by Smokey Robinson? What are you thinking? <laughs> I mean, maybe it kind of changes a little bit. But, but not much. It's mostly just a D chord. It's just m pretty much a D chord. Uh, maybe it changes just a tiny bit. I think it, I think it does. Uh, maybe, maybe a little of that. But mostly it's a D chord, you guys. And until I sing you the melody, which is brilliant, I don't think you would have known it. Maybe you want to give me your kisses sweet, but only for one night and no repeat. I think that's what it does. Maybe you'll go away if I never call But then we kick it in The taste of honey's worse than not at all Just one and then some four and some five But right up in that sweet spot again With the rhythm and with the great lyric Maybe you want to give me my kisses sweet But only for one night and no repeat And maybe you'll go away and never call A taste of honey is worse than none at all how poetic is that? Like, he would rather have not had it happen because the pain is so great. He says, oh, in that case, I don't want no part. And it's just the four chord back to the one chord, but it's so strong, isn't it? And the words here, I mean, it's it's mean again, I guess, or it's not mean, it's sad, but in that case, I don't want no par. I do believe that that would only break my heart. I call this, I mean, I maybe call this the B section. I don't know. Some people call it the chorus. I, I think this is the chorus right here, and it's very short. Oh, but if you feel like loving me and you got the notion. That's another part where anybody else phrasing it wouldn't have been just like Smokey. I second that emotion. And what a clever freaking line. Kind of reminds me of Stevie Wonder coming up with uh, yester me, yester you, yesterday. It's like a it's like a different thing. To, you know, you second emotion typically, but now you're going to second that emotion. I second that emotion. And it's just absolutely brilliant. Co-writer Al Cleveland on this song. The Miracles and Smokey Robinson made it a hit. Many people have recorded Who's Loving You? Probably most notably Michael Jackson. You. Although you can hear amazing versions if you just look it up and look for everybody who's ever recorded it. You'll find some fantastic versions of Who's Loving You? The first was by The Miracles, because it's by Smokey Robinson. Now, if you go listen to The Miracles and Smokey Robinson sing Who's Loving You, 1969 hit, you're going to get something completely different than you're going to get from uh, Michael Jackson, because the way that Smokey Robinson wrote this melody lends itself to being interpreted, maybe like none of his other melodies. I mean, I've mentioned before the, that the phrasing can be different from person to person and, and how he has a talent for that, but I don't think it shows itself nearly as much in any other song as it does in Who's Loving You. I'll, you know, go to Spotify, type in Who's Loving You and listen to everybody who's ever recorded it. But there's one thing that they all have in common. Everybody's going to do the way. They're all going to do that part differently, right? But the part that's always going to be the same, and I think it's the strongest part of the song, is I treated your face. That part, that's the strongest thing to me. It's up to the six again. We just did a song about the sixth, right? Oh, and it's this 12-8 feel again. We all love a good 12-8 feel. I'll, I'll always love a good 12-8 feel, but 
But I just wanted to say that that's my favorite part of this song. And you should go listen to everybody interpret it because much like I Will Always Love You, the Dolly Parton version could never have prepared us for what Whitney Houston was going to do with it. Yeah. I mentioned it before. This, this is the one that was inspired by Pagliacci. Uh, the second song about, about, well, I mean, if there's a smile on my face, it's only there trying to fool the public. But when it comes down to fooling you, now, honey, that's quite a different subject. Don't let my glad expression give you the wrong impression. Really, I'm sad. Oh, I'm sadder than sad. You're gone and I'm hurting so bad. Like a clown, I appear to be glad. You could imagine somebody doing a reading of this poetry, couldn't you? Which reminds me to look up Smokey Robinson as a poet. He's written beautiful poems about being a black American, and you really need to watch videos on, on YouTube of him reciting his own poetry. It's very powerful. Now let's talk about this song. Oh my gosh, and you guys, this is one of those songs I was talking about. This is, this is a song that is defined by the bass playing of James Jameson. It's coming up. Here we go. Let's talk about this melody, which again is placed perfectly in the money range of Smokey Robinson's voice. Now, if there's a smile on my face, it's only they're trying to fool the public. And these chords, too. This is something we haven't seen much of. To the four, to the flat seven. Right? Sometimes you use the flat seven. It's one of the kind of common chords in pop music, but doesn't happen that often. Um, Comes down a fool in you. Now, honey, that's quite a different subject. Now, so we've got that verse out of the way. We're going to go, don't let my glad expression. This is like, it's like the same chords again, but we've got a totally different melody and a totally different rhythm for the second verse. So I'm going to call it not a second verse, but like a B section. I don't know, but it's almost a second verse. I don't know if you guys have an opinion on that. Give you the wrong impression. And it's again with... Or... It's somewhere in between those two, I think. And we've got like almost an ambiguous third again, but not quite. Um, really I'm sad. Oh, I'm sadder than sad. You're gone and I'm hurting so bad. And we've got the same chords happening. But now we're going to change and we're going to do like a tiny little pre-chorus. There's some sad things not to mention. Now what do we have here? We've got an F chord. Hmm, we're gonna call that the five of six because it's gonna lead us right to the minor six chord. It ain't too much sadder than the tears. And I think this is the chorus. Tears of a clown. And this is like, to me, it's just like such classic Motown production right here. It's like so bouncy and fun and you have to dance to it. And we get the interlude, which is the same as the intro. Oh, yeah, baby. oh my gosh, that's such a good bass part. It just moves everything. And it's like, you couldn't even, you couldn't imagine this song being better until you hear that bass line. hard to do that at the same time. If there is smile on my face, that is what I'm talking about, everybody. The combination of these cool chords with the production of Motown, the machine of Motown, and the bass line of James Jamerson. It's like, it's, I don't know, maybe it's my favorite. Maybe it's my very favorite one. What do you think? I don't know, the way that it all comes together just kind of knocks my socks off every time I hear it. And and it's the anticipation, right? It's like, it's just, um, it's so danceable. It, it kind of reminds me of the way that dancing in the moonlight, it makes you want to dance by King Harvest um, with all the anticipations like that and the syncopations. It's like, 
it's kind of the same kind of a thing, but I mean, completely different. But but sometimes I think that syncopation can make a song, and when it's coupled with the bass line, and it's the bass line that's doing the syncopation, there's something so dancey about that. The second to last song I want to talk about is Cruisin'. And I have to be honest, I became familiar with this um, when Gwyneth Paltrow recorded it um, with who? Huey Lewis, I think. It was a really nice duet. The song lends itself well to being a duet. But the original recording, 1979, Smokey Robinson, is, is classic. I love it when we're but I think this is like, it's just such a nice, easygoing song. And it doesn't start for a second. Like you hear the chord and then the melody comes in. Baby, let's cruise away from here. And I love how Smokey sings it in two octaves like that. I think it's why it lends itself to being such a, a nice duet. Don't be confused. The way is clear. just goes back and forth between G and A minor. If you want it, you got it forever. This is not a one night stand, baby. Let the music take your mind. And just release it, you will find. You're gonna fly away. Glad you go my way. There's like that little hint of F again C, which I really like. It's kind of a gospel thing to do. Then we come to F. I love it when we're cruising together. It's like, this is the sexiest song, and it's a great road tripping song, and it's a good song to listen to with somebody you are in love with while you're driving somewhere in the car, and you're not fighting about traffic or anything. You're just feeling good. Such a nice song. Okay, here comes some chords again. Are you ready? Just C to A minor. Can you hear any melody? Just keeps going like this. Like forever. Like you think it's gonna be over now, but it's not. It just keeps doing it. All right, like seems like the boring, like most boring thing ever, right? But I love this Smokey Robinson hit from 1981. You guys, oh my gosh. Oh. got the major seven and we're just going back and forth and it's kind of mean somehow again it just kind of sounds like very confident the way he phrases that right and then and then we've got some harmony that comes in I don't care if they start to avoid me and I don't care what they do It's like somewhere in between here. I don't care and I don't care about. I think it's Smokey doing his own harmony on this in 1981. It's like, it's it's just right in between there. I don't know what it is exactly, but but I really like the way it sounds. Anything else but being with you, being with you. Now, the chords don't do much different. We're just going to go from the, from the one to the four a bunch of times. And we're going to go, honey, don't go. Don't leave this scene Be out of the picture And off of the screen And don't let them say And it's almost, is, is it don't let them say Or is it don't let them say It's kind of in between Don't let them say We told you so Don't tell me you love me And then let me go That's, a, that's more interesting with the chords. They tell me all about your heartbreak reputation. I'm back. I don't care what they think about me. It's 
one of those songs that actually starts with the chorus. That's epic. Because the verse is really, Honey, don't go, or people can change. They always do. This is maybe maybe my favorite part of the lyric, because it's like the most memorable part of the lyric for me somehow. Haven't they noticed the changes in you? Like, those lyrics, I think anybody could just hear them on the radio and sing along with that part because, I don't know, some lyrics are just so, they just fall so nicely that they're memorable for everybody. I think that's one of them. This is another song without a bridge. And it's the last song that I'm talking about today. I've had so much fun talking about these Smokey Robinson compositions. I, I'd like to make a playlist of all of these. Maybe I'll, I'll do that and I'll put it in the description of my video. Uh, just so that you can go through and listen to all of my favorite Smokey Robinson songs. There are a few more that didn't uh, quite make my cut. My video was getting very long. But thank you so much for going through all of these with me. It's been so much fun. I also want to say that Smokey Robinson had a hit recently. He co-wrote on an Anderson Pack track. Anderson Pack track. And it's very nice. And it's easier to walk away than to it's called Make It Better. You gotta go listen to it. It's beautiful. I don't know if the world will ever fully understand the incredible difference that Smokey Robinson has made through his songwriting, the incredible mark that he's left on the world and continues to leave. I'd like to invite you to become more aware of what's going on in the music that you listen to by telling you how you can sign up for Nebula. Nebula is another platform, much like Netflix, but for educational content only with no ads ever. I have created four classes for Nebula. One about how to create your own strong motifs for improvising, and two about everything I know about chords. It'll show you, no matter what instrument you play, how to build and understand chords and use them in your own playing. Put the C on top, and this becomes the first inversion of C major. It's got a whole different sound, doesn't it? And if you want, you can try the second inversion, which is to put the E on top. And in your own analyzing and in your own compositions. I've also made a wonderful class with Adam Neely all about the blues. All of the content on Nebula is put there by creators like me, who also put content on YouTube, except we put more on Nebula. Our videos go deeper on Nebula. There's bonus content, extended videos, Nebula originals, and even exciting new content that I haven't even told you about yet that'll be available early next year. Here's your teaser. If I ever saw you, I didn't catch your name, but it doesn't really matter. I will always feel the same. And you can get Nebula today by clicking on the card that's above my head or the link in the description of the video. For a limited time, you can also gift a lifetime membership to Nebula by clicking the other link in the description. For just $30, you get Nebula for the entire year and access to, like I said, all of my classes and all of my extra content, plus the content of all of the creators on Nebula. No matter what you're interested in learning about, you will find it on Nebula, I guarantee you. And you can also find amazing videos by YouTube music creators that you already know and love, like Charles Cornell, Polyphonic, Adam Neely, 12 Tone, Mary Spender, many more. Sign up for Nebula yourself or gift it to somebody who could use it. Like I say, my classes on Nebula are really kind of dear to me. I've put a lot of effort into them and the team at Nebula has made them look fabulous. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.